Is it possible to live a life without cause and effect? I don't know. You don't know? This young lady is right. If you, um, if you live a life of consciousness, no effect. Because you would never do, get to create a cause. Only when you're living a life of unconsciousness are there causes and effect. Only when you. So just think about it. Every time you listen to thoughts, you do something wrong that bring on something else that's wrong. Every time. But when you don't listen to the thoughts, you're just a living being and just living your life. And in that light, it's just life. There is no effect and cause. You're not up and down. You're not afraid. You're not in and out or any of that stuff. You're just a living being. And life is being provided for you without you even trying to make it work. So you're not reaching outside for anything. That makes sense? Yes. You only have these causes and effects in our life if we reach outside for something, for love, for more money, for, for more, more fake identities and things like that. So you're absolutely right. It's, a, it's another illusion from the devil. It's not real. It's all illusion. Yeah. Um, that reminds me of what I wanted to say about fighting. I realize you're right. Anyways, about fighting, only people that think they need to fight sometimes get yeah. into fights. I promise you, when you lay down all identities, the way you see yourself, and what you think about yourself, and what you think you ought to be, and the way people should perceive you, and who you are, when you lay that down, the fight will end. There's nothing to fight for. And when I ask about it, I ask, I wasn't talking about physical. Of course you're gonna protect yourself in a physical way. I'm thinking of the spiritual fight that's going on inside of us and outside of us, inside of others. Just imagine that if you had no identity, if you didn't think of yourself as being wonderful and very important, right? And someone came along and tell you that, no, you're not that wonderful. You will feel nothing about it. I also love, like, last week, you, you, oh, sorry. Um, I've also been watching, before all of this was happening, I had a period where I was watching a lot of near-death experience testimonies of people. And last week you had, like, this amazing uh, story as well. Someone going through it, and the way he was explaining it is kind of what, what we're trying to do here, right? Like, yeah. go back to nothingness. Yes. And there is so much joy and love and peace in, in nothing, it's, it's really amazing. It really is. And I, like, it's nice if you're telling and it's beautiful when other, like the testimonials that you hear about, it went, because it's now via YouTube and stuff, it's amazing. Um, but there is such a deep truth in it that I could, it so resonated with me that I was like, this is just what it is. Like, yeah. it doesn't matter what word you give to it, where, we're here to live an experience. My friend also always says, like, we're here to live like a human experience. And if you're getting too much in the way of it, um, you might miss the joy of just observing and just right. being in it. Because there is nothing to live for. There is nothing to gain. There's nowhere to go other than returning back to the nothingness. Absolutely. You want to return back to the nothingness. I'm sorry, but we have been taught wrong from day one to be this, to be that, to act like this, to act like that, to have this, to have that, to compete with someone, be the best, you got to be all this. They set us up to know Jesus. They tell you, oh, you need to go to church and know Jesus. First thing they ask you, what church do you go to? It, it, it's a setup. If you never went to church, you could still be nothing and have an amazing life because the truth is already with us. And they don't have good fellowship like we have here anyway. We're supposed to be getting together, edifying one another and correcting who we can't see, right? And, but they don't tell you that. They take you away from that. They take you away from the truth that you already have and know, and they put you on a path of hell. Yeah. <laughs> Pure hell. 
Everybody catching hell. Everybody catching hell. Except for baby Jessica's daddy. <laughs> She's like, who is that? <laughs> How many people know who baby Jessica's daddy is? No? Yeah, Jessica from the well? Yes. <laughs> her, I don't know about the daddy. Yeah, baby Jessica a while back in Texas fell in the well. There was a girl fell in the well, and her name was baby Jessica. And so that's where I get that from, her daddy. And her mother threw in the well, I think. Oh, no. No? Is that, is that right? I don't know about that. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No, I'm, I, I, I may be wrong about that, but she, I, I know she was in the well. I'm not sure how she got in the well. But I know she fell in the well in Texas. And it was a big worldwide news yeah. and about her. So that's where I get that from. Everybody smoke weed. And then once I heard Oprah say, everybody smoke weed. And so baby Jessica's daddy. <laughs> that's where I get that from. <laughs> so, so I know she fell in the well or something. Comes out of the way. But uh, anyway, in closing, I want to encourage you as a living witness you want to become a nothingness. You want to be the light. You are the light. But you just don't see that you are the light because you've been lied to. And you were lied to, and now you're trying to live up to the lie of being all these things, and you're even calling yourself these things. You're not. Stop competing with anyone. Just simply live your life. Stop trying to have what someone else has. If they have eight degrees, you just wish them well, and you live your life. And I want to encourage you, you got to cross over this prison of thoughts. Jesus said that we were in a prison. He came to set the capture free. And what he's setting you free from is the imagination. No one ever told you that growing up. They, they may have mentioned bring every thought into captivity, but they didn't tell us that we were enslaved to it. We are enslaved to thoughts. Thoughts can make you feel a certain way. Either you are this or you're not. You're, it's all lies. So what I want you to do in order to get over it, do not give up. Watch thoughts, watch thoughts. Just watch them. Don't fight with them. It doesn't make sense to fight with anybody or about anything at any time. If somebody hates you, they call you names, just wish them well. They cannot see what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. If, if someone tries to hurt you, embarrass you, if you don't have any impression of yourself, just think about it. how can someone hurt you when you have no impression of yourself? <laughs> And you can go anywhere in the world and not be bothered at all about what anyone says about you or think about you or whatever, because you have no impression of yourself. You know all those things are not you. And you know that they cannot see. So what if you say something like, what if you sort of, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm like trying to get as much in here. Um, but what if, because sometimes I do, um, because I do, I don't want to be unkind, right? Like, especially if you, especially if you're responding to someone's anger or the anger inside yourself, because that's where it starts. Yeah. And then... She made such a good point. Everything starts with you, a thought. Mm -hmm. It doesn't start with the people out there. It starts with you. Let's say somebody trying to hurt you. You could have a thought before you even feel and react. If you didn't have a thought, you wouldn't feel and you would not react. You are your own world and everything you do start with you. You are the beginning and the end. Go ahead. Just, yeah, so let's say you, you had a moment where you freaked out and, um, or you got impatient. Is that a part of this? When you, if, let's say that something happened, someone made you angry. Yeah. Anger came up, you freaked out. Just notice that you did and be glad for it. Because it's just allowing you to see what's still in you. Mm -hmm. And it's not you that's freaking out. It's that darkness that's there freaking out. So just see it. And don't blame the person for the way you feel. 
Because if it was the inside of you, you wouldn't feel that way. So be glad to see it. Let me say Yeah, and, and let it pass. It'll be fine. You got to practice and this is what I've been doing for 37, 34, 33, 34 years. Let a thought pass. Just let them pass. And they, because it's new to you, sometimes you're going to get into the pain of it. It's going to fall because you, wanna, you, don't, you don't let it just pass sometimes. It fall into emotions. It really does. And then you start feeling like it's really you. It's not. Do nothing to satisfy it. Let the light come in and satisfy it destroy it for you. <laughs> that makes sense? Yeah. It's easier said than done only because you have thought all this time that it was you. And you've been overreacting, giving it life. And then know you were giving the devil life. But now that you've started to know you're going to stop overreacting and you won't give life to the devil, you will give light you will surrender to the light, and the light will destroy the devil. It really, really, I, I promise you it will. God love us. It's already done. We are already free, except that we've been set up and we believe thoughts. Yep. True. We believe thoughts. That's the only thing that's wrong. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to quickly say, I appreciate how you always say stay with it, stay with it, stay with it, yeah. because as we stay with it, as we do the silent prayer, and once we've forgiven and done all of those things, it's, it's a natural progression to nothingness. Yes. It's just natural. It, you, don't, you don't think about it. You just find yourself headed on that path toward nothingness. Yeah. Yeah. Once you get on it and you start, you get a little light, a little light. Some people give up because it's so painful to the ego, and they think that it's happening to them. They think it's happening to them, but it's not, right? And they'll give up. And, but it's that one or two people who are courageous enough to go through the hell, go through the fire. Be tried by the fire and go through it, and go through it. And because we're so identified, the only thing that really keeps us there, as I said, we're so identified with the, the false self and, and, and the false feelings. Emotions are evil. There's nothing good about emotions. But in this world, we have pushed emotions as good. They even tell men, oh, you should cry. It's hard to be a man it's hard on men to try to be a man. That is, that's the devil telling you that. A woman don't even want an emotional man. She doesn't want it. She'll say she want it, right? And she'll get you, and then she'll start beating you up and take your money. <laughs> or she'll make you walk this little tiny doll up and down the street. <laughs> The dog's so little, it don't even look right, man. <laughs> Have you ever seen a man walking a tiny dog? What do you think about that? In the hat, in the brown hat. It's one of the most ridiculous things that you could ever see <laughs> in your whole life. And then to top it off, he carried the baby with him. He had the baby in the front. In the front. <laughs> Little poodle. Men, fight for your masculinity a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Fight for it a little bit. I don't care what you got to overcome. It's worth fighting for. Yep. And ladies, you don't want to be weak either. You know, James said he likes for y'all to be a little beta. <laughs> he and Joel. You be like, but you don't want to be beta. You want to be a perfect love. God came for us all, and he made the way back to love for all who will receive it. But if you don't want it, he'll just let you suffer. I heard this story in closing. I heard this story about the Jews when Jesus existed, walked around. A lot of the Jews didn't accept it, right? They didn't accept him as a savior. And so uh, Christ said one day to the Jews, uh, especially in his hometown. That's what I'm telling you. In your own family, hometown, 
they're going to turn on you. Mm-hmm. Expect it. If it happened to Jesus, why shouldn't it happen to us? The uh, evil hate the light. The darkness hate the light. But Jesus was yelling at them and saying that, you know, they asked something. I mean, he said he was to save you. He was other than what they said. He's like, oh, you call yourself a prophet of, of God? Bless me, bless me. We're going to kill you. And so they took him out in this field to kill him, but he said, no, you're not killing me now. It's not time. So he walked back, got away from me. He left hometown, right? But he said that there are, in paraphrasing, there are people in the world beside the Jews who is, uh, have accepted God and they're being healed. But the Jews won't, and you're not being healed. And he said, just because you were chosen as the people, it doesn't mean you are not enslaved. You must be born again, too. Isn't that deep? But the Jews didn't think that they should be born again. But they must be born again, too. Every human being must return to the Father. Every human being. You must be born again. And born again simply means realizing you are wrong for being angry, and it has separated you from God. You're out in the wilderness. Emotions are like it's the wilderness. The thoughts of you, the emotion of wilderness. See it that way. And you're living in the wilderness. But once you forgive, you come out of the thought, and you no longer live you back to the Father. You return to the Father. All right? And last day I heard Dennis Frager and some other Jews having a discussion. And they were talking about how everybody is a victim now. And they talked about the, I think, ADL or something like that. And Dennis said, which is such a good point, and this other guy, this other pre, uh, rabbi man said it too, that the ADL, an organization like that, we have all kinds of organizations now in our country, and all they do is make victims out of people. They make everybody a victim because being a victim, it makes good money. It's good for fundraising. They make buku money because all they do is put some fear in you, and then they say, oh, in order to help us do this, to protect you, send us $100. Mm-hmm. And because you're afraid, you send $100. Wow. It's a fundraising thing. Wow. You've been played. Yep. You are not a victim. And all these organizations do, do the same thing. They, they make everybody a victim. That's what happened to the blacks over the last 70 years. They made the blacks a victim. They made you a victim. You're not a victim. And they know it. They're just using you for profit. That's all it is. So stop being a victim. Stop, yeah, stop being divided. Become one. Become whole. Become a nothing. A living being. All right? Stop being a victim. We are free. And when I asked the biblical question, I wasn't thinking about the physical answer. I was thinking about spiritual answer. And that's what's going to happen to you eventually. If you stay with it, you will be think spiritual because you have a spiritual mind, a renewed mind. You're not going to have the same dark mind you have now. The worldly mind, it will disappear. All right? Men and women. And stay with it, stay with it, stay with it. Because the world is going to turn against you. They really will, and, and they can't help it. Just know that. They cannot see. You're already saved, <laughs> meaning that you're children of God. All this stuff that's going on inside of you that making you do what you do is not you. You have never done wrong in your whole life. When you would be your wife, how many women got beat this morning? <laughs> your husband did beat you? He didn't beat you this morning. What's wrong with you, man? She's pregnant for now. Oh. Well, no why beat the husband now? That's not her or him. That's that thing that made a home in her yeah. or him. Really. Yeah. And once you wake up, you're going to see that, and you will see how to deal with it. You don't need to plan on how you're going to deal with it. You will see how to deal with it. All right? So stay with the prayer. Stay with it. And you'll see when to speak up and when not to. 
Another thing I want you to know, the Spirit of God will speak through you. He will use your mouth, your tongue, and you'll be, wow, where did that come from? <laughs> right now, the devil uses your mouth to speak through, right? But that's going to switch. It really will switch, and you will, he will speak through you and give you the right words at the right time in the right, whatever situation, it'll be the right words. The devil will no longer speak through you. All right? Yes. Amazing. So stay with the prayer. Watch, forgive, and let life happen. Just watch those signs. Do not give up. Don't stop. Because the devil got to have a fit. The truth is catching up with the devil, and he's trying to destroy the devil. The devil got to have a fit, but it's going to feel like you, but it's not you. He's going to make you feel lonely by yourself. Nobody loves you, but you got nobody to call. That's beautiful. It's not you. All right? Amazing. So thank you all very much. Uh, this Thursday, it's first Thursday, right? Yes. Right there. First Thursday this month, the men's forum at 7 p.m. this month. And ladies, this third Thursday for the ladies. All right? Amazing meetings, too. Um, do the silent prayer, and we will read to uh, Super Chats tomorrow. The office is closed. We have a socialist holiday tomorrow. <laughs> Coming in, so you well. But we got to have it. The office closed, but we're doing live shows tomorrow. All right, so tune in. Um, and what else? And your know, donations and offering, go to rebuildingtheman.com, all right? Thank you all so much for tuning in. It was amazing today. Thank you all for amazing fellowship. Yeah. It was my doing. Amazing.